Good evening. My name is Adrian Talley, and I'm the superintendent of Indian Prairie School District. I would like to welcome you to our second Parent University. Tonight's presentation will focus on Google Classroom. After our first Parent University, we surveyed parents for feedback on future topics, and Google Classroom was a frequent request. Before we start, I want to let you know about our next Parent University, which will be on November 18th. The topic will be community resources for families facing challenges during our current pandemic. I hope you will join us next month. This evening, we have two outstanding presenters. They presented last time, and we were happy to have them come back again. Andy Fekete, Instructional Technology Specialist, and Brian Giovannini, Director of Innovation. They will give you an overview of Google Classroom from the student, parent, and teacher perspectives, and also demonstrate the student-teacher experience in Google Classroom. I will now turn it over to Andy Fekete to begin the presentation. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Good evening, everyone. Give me a moment as we pull up the presentation. So welcome to Google Classroom. Welcome to Parent University Google Classroom. There is a link to tonight's presentation. It is available at bit.ly slash IPSD Google Classroom. The link is also located underneath the video that you're watching on YouTube. So tonight, we're going to do an introduction and an overview into what Google Classroom is. And we're also going to demonstrate some common Google Classroom tasks. We have spoken with some teachers and really looked at the way that our teachers are using Google Classroom with their students. And the goal of our demonstration is to show you some of the things that your um, children or students uh, will be doing at home um, or as they're learning and working through Google Classroom. One thing that we wanted to start with was the Google Classroom icon. Um, it's a really important icon to find on your students' Chromebooks. Uh, the Google Classroom icon is available uh, in a number of places on their Chromebooks and can be accessed from the um, apps menu on any Google um, on any Google product or Google screen. Uh, so whether you're at google.com or Google Drive, any of those, you can get access to Google Classroom. Um, additionally, there is a there is a uh, icon for direct access to Google Classroom um, available on all of the Chromebooks. A nice big icon for the students to find and click to have easy access to Classroom. As we look at just an overview of what Classroom is. Classroom is really a workflow management platform. It was designed as to, to provide teachers with a process for creating, distributing, grading, and providing feedback for content submitted by students from Google Drive in a digital form. As we looked at the shift from, you know, to moving a lot of instruction online, we needed to <clears throat> uh, have access to a platform for teachers to be able to create and distribute content into the hands of their students. Then students be able to work with that content, complete assignments, turn it into their, their teachers to be graded and then to get feedback. Google Classroom allows our students to access their digital assignments, read announcements from their teachers, participate in discussion questions and forums, as well as find static content and information. I'm now gonna turn it over to Brian, who's going to take you through some other elements of Google Classroom, and then I will be back in a few minutes to do the demonstration. Good evening. One of the first things that we wanted to do was talk a little bit about the difference between Google Classroom and Synergy, which many of our parents access for a variety of reasons in our district. We received a number of questions asking about some features that were really part of the Parent View um, Access app. And so we wanted to make sure that we explained how Google Classroom and Synergy work together and how they are a little bit different as well. The first side, Andy just mentioned 
that Google Classroom portal and how students really access for, for a lot of their content information from a teacher that they can access for specific classes or clubs. The other thing about Google Classroom is it is, it is only um, accessed by IPSD users. So many parents are asking, can I access my student's Google Classroom? It is not, it's only available for IPSD accounts. On the other side, Parent View. Parent View is that portal for our parents to access grades and communication from teachers where they can get a better snapshot of the performance of their student throughout the semester or at the end of a quarter and semester about their student. Parent View is, can be accessible for many more parties besides students, including parents and guardians as well. The two systems can talk to each other on the teacher and district side. So we wanted to walk through that a little bit before we started to really dive into Google Classroom to talk about some of those features that were different between the two platforms. So as we start to talk about what is Google Classroom and how do you access it, Andy talked about the, the number of different ways in which you can access Google Classroom. Once you access that classroom, you then fall into this initial platform where you can see all the, feet, all the classes that your student is enrolled in. So it is a one-stop shop where you, where you can see everything for your student in one stop. For an elementary school student, this may be only one class. For a middle school student, it may be six or seven or maybe eight, depending on if they're involved in some other clubs who may be using Google Classroom as well, or some other resources available from, from their specific school. And same thing with the high school as well. So once you're in here, you can access all of your classrooms from this home page as well. Up at the top, you'll also see a couple of other different tabs as well. The first one is the to do tab. This is all of your assignments for specific classes where you can access the things that are upcoming today, tomorrow, as well as some things that are missing, as well as things that have been completed and done in the past. The review tab is only available for educators. That's important on our side just to kind of see what's going. And when we took a screenshot, that, in, that was included because as from the teacher lens, we can see that to review tab. And the last one is calendar. Calendar is very similar to to do. It kind of lists all of your items in a calendar format. Depending on how you like to view or access information about specific classes, you can use that feature as well to see what is upcoming. So that's the first kind of introduction to Google Classroom when you initially you log in through the SSO or other method. Now, if I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into Google Classroom, there are some things in which I can use to navigate through the different classes and features that are available. Up at the very top left, you'll see three lines where you can access the main menu. On this main menu, this is where you can find some of the features that were initially available from that initial home login screen. But the nice thing about the main menu access is once you launch a classroom, you can always go back to the main menu to find some of the other things that are available in classroom. The first one, classes. It'll take you back to that initial home page where you can see all of your classes. Calendar, which I talked about. And then in the next part where it says teaching, again, that's the teacher side. So those are some things that we would see on our side for some classes that we have on the educator side. Then at the very, very bottom, you'll see enrolled. So this is where our students would see a majority of the information for their specific classes and information. One, it's another direct tab to, to the to-do list, which summarizes all of your to-do assignments for all of your classes in one. So if you wanted to get a snapshot of what's upcoming or what am I missing for all of your classes at once, that to-do tab is really, really handy and really, really useful that you can access at any time. The other thing about the main menu is it can directly take you into a class or launch a class for any of the ones that you are enrolled in for your class or clubs or anything else associated with your school. And that's the main menu access that you can find using the three, three lines at the top left. Now, once I have uh, entered into a class, so if I've entered into my second period English class, now I'm starting to get into the actual classroom dynamic that my teacher has control over. Once I'm in there, you're gonna see four different headings at the top. As a district, we have a lot of different features and um, individual assignments that we work through. And we're gonna go over how most of our teachers use Google Classroom to interact with your class. There might be a few differences here or there on how teachers use the platform, but for the most part, we'll talk about how most of our teachers use these to communicate with their students and show what's available for their specific class. The first one is a stream. This really provides classroom updates. You can scroll through and a teacher can post information 
where the most current item is listed at the top. They could post updates, they can post announcements, they can just share specific assignments. There's a lot of features that they can put in stream. And this is where teachers use it to communicate with their class about different features of their classroom, especially in a remote learning setting. The second tab is classwork. This is where a majority of the, where you're gonna spend a majority of your time interacting with the class and where teachers are gonna post a majority of the information that a student will be accessing during a specific class period or for that class in general. We're gonna show you what that looks like here in a second, but that classwork tab is where you're gonna spend a majority of the information for some static content. So the third tab is people. This just gives you a quick snapshot of the students enrolled in your class. From an educator side, this is really helpful to make sure that we have all the students enrolled in our class. And the last one that you'll see is grades. Grades only appears once they are entered into Google Classroom. So depending on how a teacher uses that feature, that um, tab may or may not appear. But once a teacher does submit an assignment through there and graded it, then that will appear for our students. And we did want to make note the official gradebook for IPSD 204 is Synergy. And that's, again, how they can communicate back and forth. But that is one feature of Google Classroom that students may see as they log into a specific class. And each one of their classes will be different and have different content within each one of these tabs. So now as I go into the actual classwork tab, this is where I can get some information that is relevant to my class. What we tried to do in this demonstration from a teacher lens is show you the many different ways that a teacher could set this up because all of their classes are a little bit different. For an elementary school classroom, depending on how they set it up, it may look a little different because some of our elementary school teachers have set up uh, Google Classrooms for each one of their subjects. Some of them have just set up for one and then put all the information within one classwork page. So we just tried to show a couple of different ways in which a teacher may or may have uh, set this up. So you can see at the top here, this is really a topic. And that underneath that topic is where they can post all the information. They can post it a week at a time, all at once, or just as things kind of up come or up, up, that are upcoming. You can see one example that a teacher may do is by units or by weeks, by months, or by specific topics or skills that they're connecting with in a classroom. Over on the left, you'll also see all the different topics. In our screenshot, you can only see unit one, but you can also see that there are three other topics that are available for this class, unit two, unit three. If a teacher, for instance, set it up a little bit differently and they did math, science, and social studies, those would be the topics that would associated with it. And you can see there's uh, three blue colored circles there. Once an assignment is completed, those colors will change to gray, indicating that the assignment has been completed. So that's a nice quick check as well to know that you have completed that assignment. And so as you log into that uh, Google Classroom Classwork tab, this is what you'll interact with and, and where you will find a majority of the information for the class. So once I've done that, Andy's going to go through a number of these situations here in a minute, but we wanted to talk through each one of these and kind of explain it before Andy demos, demos these and how a teacher might set them up. The first one is turning assignments through Google Classroom. Our teachers do a number of different things, and Google Classroom allows teachers to make a copy of an assignment, whether it's a Google Doc or an Excel spreadsheet or anything else, where each student gets an individual copy of it. What Google Classroom allows then is for the students to complete that assignment on their own and then submit it back to the teacher. So the teacher has direct access to an individual student's performance on a task after, after using just one document to submit through everyone. The second one is attaching an assignment. That would happen if a teacher was going to assign some specific activity and then ask a student to find something and then attach it before submitting it. This could be a video, this could be a Google Doc that they created on their own, but their student will then have to go find that and attach it. It could be an external link or something within the Google Drive suite. The third one is just marking a task as done. There isn't necessarily a specific assignment that you'll be attaching here. This could be, for an example, watching a video or reading an article or observe an observation. What this does is it allows a student and teacher to communicate back, back and forth about the learning outcome and a student to identify that I have completed this and this is an understanding for a teacher on where the student is in their learning so that they can provide 
supports based on what the student may or may need. It's just a quick check to kind of identify that I have completed this assignment. It's also a good way for a teacher to submit some information and allow a student to identify when they've completed it so that they can mark it as done and it can become off their to-do list as well. And the last two features that some of our teachers may use are classroom discussions and online quizzes, which Andy will demonstrate here in a moment. So as before we go into this demonstration, we wanted to kind of explain how this is set up. So what you'll see is I, Brian, took the role of teacher. So I have done all of my pre-work ahead of this to set this experience up. So as the teacher role, everything is set up for the student and all the assignments are ready to go. As Andy, he will be enrolled as the student. So he'll be showing the interface of what a student will experience based on what the teacher has set up. And he'll be going through a number of those different scenarios that we just talked about to kind of show you what it looks like in visual form so a student can have a better understanding of what that experience looks like. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Andy to go through this demonstration on the different features and ways a student may interact with Google Classroom. All right, thank you, Brian. Okay, so I have gone through my single sign-on platform. I've clicked the giant Google Classroom icon that we explored earlier, and it has taken me to this landing page. So this shows me that, um, and again, you are seeing from a student perspective, but this shows me that I have six cards here that represent the six different classes that I am enrolled in <clears throat> uh, to navigate a few other items uh, on this page. These three lines in the upper left-hand corner, this is that main menu that Brian was referencing where I can uh, quickly jump to any of the courses that I'm enrolled in. Um, I can go to settings. Um, and uh, make sure that I have email notifications. Uh, if I have access to email, middle school and high school students have access to email. So this is where I can make sure that I receive email notifications when my teacher posts feedback, uh, my grades or a new assignment um, to, to classroom. So that's a, a nice area to check as well. Um, some buttons across here. So we have the to-do button. So this is a new button to Google Classroom this year. Um, this came from a lot of teacher feedback saying it'd be really nice if there was a way to consolidate all of the students' work into one convenient place. So, you know, a, a middle school student that might have seven or eight classrooms can click this one to do button and then see any assignments that they have that are outstanding. Right. So these are any assignments that are due this week um, down here at the bottom things that are upcoming for next week, things in the future. I can also sort this by class. I can also toggle and see if there's any assignments that I have that are missing. And then I can also review things that are done that I have completed. So that's a really nice new update that came out this year. Again, I can use my main menu to go back to my classes or use my main menu to just toggle directly to another class here. To review, again, that's just a teacher button, right? But that shows our teachers work that has been submitted for them to grade or provide feedback on. The other button that I wanna show you tonight is the calendar button. If I click the calendar button, again, this puts everything into a calendar format so that if I had an assignment due on Friday, and again, it consolidates all classes into one location. The other nice thing uh, about the calendar icon is there's this other calendar icon up here, right? That uh, if I am in the future somewhere, I can click and it will take me back to today, right? Um, and again, I can sort by whatever class I wanna go to. Last thing that I wanna show you is um, this grid in the upper right-hand corner. This is where our students will access any of their other Google apps, right? So if students are working in classroom and their teacher says, create a new Google Doc, right? They can click Google Docs here and go right to Google Docs um, or um, you know, go to Drive or whatever. Um, they have access to all of their icons here to, to quickly jump 
to any other place that they need to be. All right, so let's go, let's dive into our demo classroom for tonight and explore some assignments. So I'm going to click on our parent university class. When I land here, the first place that I always land is at the stream. All right? There's not much on the stream. The stream just is a place where the majority of our teachers are using the stream to post class announcements. Right? They may, uh, you know, my son has spirit day tomorrow, right? And so it's pajama day. So on his stream, in fact, we were just looking at it at dinner. Uh, on his stream, it says spirit day tomorrow, wear pajamas, right? Um, so, uh, so that's what his teacher put on his stream, right? So it's just some kind of, you know, announcement, upcoming test, spirit day, something like that, right? You're not really going to find a lot of content here. Students do have the opportunity to add class comments, right? So if they had a, a question about the announcement um, or something that had been posted, um, they could post some kind of announcement here, right? And those, those go to the teacher so that the teacher can read them um, and respond accordingly. Uh, the, where you're going to spend the majority of your time is under classwork. So let's go there now. So now I'm in classwork, um, and uh, here's a, a few things that I see before I jump in to the assignments here. Um, you see that uh, teachers will most likely have topics set up in their classroom. Uh, topics are just ways for teachers to organize the content that is out there um, and just to help students organize the work that they're seeing, right? So they may organize it by unit, by week, by month, by you know unit topic. Um, you know, there's lots of different ways that they, they that they might organize the topics of their classroom. They might do it by sub um, sub subject. Um, it's probably not a word, but I'm going to make it up. Um, you know, where the the overall classroom is English or ELA, and then within there they have a grammar topic and a journal writing topic, and an essay topic, and a research topic, right? Kind of the different components or elements of ELA, right? So that might be another way that they uh, organize things. On the right hand, on the, sorry, on the left hand side here, uh, students can easily navigate from topic to topic, right? So if I just wanted to just see topic three, I can click on topic three, and everything else disappears except for what's posted under topic three. So this is a really nice way for students to focus on something specific within classroom, right? So if at the beginning of a period um, or lesson, the teacher says, today we're working on grammar, right? As a student, I can go over and click on just the grammar topic as just an example, and then just see those assignments or those posts that are related to that. It filters out everything else, right? Now I can go back to all topics to see everything again. I can click on view your work. Um, and again, this just shows me all of the work that I have due for this class. Again, the to-do organizes my entire uh, classroom. It organizes all of my classes. View your work is for this class specifically. Uh, Google Calendar, this actually opens a Google Calendar, so a different kind of view, right? Um, so you can see, um, um, so it opens up an actual Google Calendar, right, where students can see the their work displayed in, in a more traditional calendar format. Again, the calendar that is on the main Google Classroom page organizes everything together, right? Um, but does it in, you know, kind of a basic calendar format, right? This calendar button actually goes to Google, Google Calendar and is in a more traditional calendar uh, format. Last one is the class drive folder. So each Google Classroom has a drive folder that is set up. Um, so this is a folder within Google Drive 
where the files actually live, right? Um, so any assignments that I do, any work that I turn in, anything that I create automatically is saved in this folder, right? Google Classroom is just a forward facing um, uh, a way to, again, distribute and collect um, work from students. Um, it really runs on Google Drive in the background and everything is saved and lives in Google Drive. Um, again, the people tab, this is where I can just see my teachers. Um, and then if there are any of, any classmates, I can see my classmates there as well. <clears throat> all right, let's go. Um, all right, so let's jump into an assignment here. So I have five demo assignments that I wanna take you through. These are five common um, ways that teachers may be using Google Classroom with their students. Um, okay, so the first assignment, um, let's open this one up. So this is an example of a time that a teacher has created um, some kind of worksheet, activity, Google Doc, um, something that they want students to open and submit to them, right? So in this one, uh, I just created a welcome to our class um, document. We'll open this up. You can see that it's been renamed with my name. Right, Google Classroom um, automatically names um, things uh, for teachers um, to make it easier when teachers are review students' work, students' work um, to just have everything um, already named with the students' names. Um, so here's just a document, right? Where uh, you know I can I can quickly type some information here. I can spell. Um, and notice in the upper right hand corner, um, there is a new button that appears, right? So on assignments that are assigned this way, right, there's this new button that appears in a Google Doc that is a turn in button, right? So that when students are done with their assignment, they have this new button that they can click to turn that assignment into their teacher, right? So I can click that turn in button, it's gonna take me back to classroom. And before it turns in, right, it's just gonna confirm, right? You are turning in this assignment. Um, and yes, I can turn it in, I'm ready to turn it in. Um, a couple of things. Uh, that I'd like to, to mention about that process. One is if a student ever needed to make an adjustment, right? Um, or noticed a mistake, right? They're reviewing their work and they said, oh, you know what? That needed to be in complete sentences, right? I needed to say not just blue, but uh, my favorite color is blue, right? They can unsubmit that assignment, make those necessary changes, and then turn that assignment back in. A couple of other um, items to note on this page are there are class comments and private comments. So for every assignment that is posted in Classroom, your students will see both of these options, both class comments and private comments. And it's important to note, uh, to note um, and know the difference. Uh, class comments are posted to the entire class, right? So if I just had something um, you know, that, that, that I might want to ask the entire class or make a, a note um, on for the entire class, I might ask that as a class comment. Um, as, a, as an example might be, uh, does anyone remember, did uh, Mr. Giovannini say these needed to be in complete sentences, right? I could ask that as a class comment. This would go out to all of my classmates um, and they could respond and say, oh yeah, duh, right? Always have to write in complete sentences, right? Um, that goes out to all of my classmates. The private comment is a private um, communication between the student and the teacher, right? So I might write a private comment that says, uh, you know, um, 
I was really struggling with number four here. Uh, do you have some time, um, you know, after school that we could review this, right? Um, that's an example of a private comment that a student might send, right? Um, so that's the difference between class comments and private comments. And again, you'll see that um, as we go through each one of these assignments. I go back to my classroom. Right. Now that that assignment has been turned in, notice that it has changed from from blue to gray. Right. So if you ever just want to do a quick scan of your student's Google Classroom, this is a nice way to do that. Right. Anything that's gray means that it has been turned in. Anything that is blue um, and um, means that it is outstanding, right? It has not yet been submitted. Um, and I should point out that it is blue because I have configured uh, my classroom to be blue or the teacher has configured their classroom to be blue. They may be green, red, pink, purple, yellow, orange, any, any button that or any color that the teacher uh, chooses. Um, so, uh, but it's just a difference between a solid color or gray. All right. Next one is submitting other work. So another way that teachers are using Google Classroom is they are using Google Classroom to collect work from their students from um, other places, um, work that students have created in other platforms, um, other parts of the SSO, um, other documents, uh, or even photos or images. Um, I know that we uh, got a question from a parent um, from tonight's session about turning in um, photos or images. Um, so the way that a teacher would set this up is there is nothing attached here, right? So um, the teacher has, in this specific example, the teacher has uh, created an assignment and said, you know, I'd like you to submit your Wii video project, right? Um, after completing your Wii video project, submit it through Google Classroom to be provided, per, to be graded and to provide feedback. And so that I could provide you feedback um, and then some directions for how to do that. But notice that there's no document set up here um, for me to work through. Um, there's no worksheet, right? So instead, what I will do as a student is click this plus add or create. When I click this, I have all of these different places that I can go to either add a file or create a new file. Um, if I choose my Google Drive, I'm gonna pull something from Google Drive. Um, if I choose link, right, this is where I could attach a link, right? So here's my Wii Video Project link. And I can add multiple pieces. Right. Um, and then file this one, this one would be the one for images. Right. So the Chromebooks have a camera on them that uses the webcam. So the students can open the camera on the Chromebooks, uh, kind of hold up their document in front of the camera, snap, take a snapshot of it, um, and then use the file uh, selector here to select that image to attach to Google Classroom. So if I do that now, running a little slow, uh, I'm not gonna do that right now, but if I do that now, um, students would be able to select those files that they had captured using their webcam and then attach them to uh, to their Google Classroom. Uh, additionally, if they had a smartphone or a tablet um, or you know another personal device, they could take images that way. Probably upload upload those images to Google Drive um, and uh, and turn those those in uh, that way. The other uh, options that you have in this menu are to create some files. So instead of the teacher creating the worksheet um, where uh, it said, you know, favorite color, favorite food, interesting thing about you, 
right? The teacher might just give the students directions and say, I want you to create a Google Doc and answer these three questions. Um, so what students would do is they would open the assignment, they would go here to add, and then add a Google Doc, right? That automatically attaches it to Classroom and automatically gives the teacher access to that assignment, right? So that they can review it, provide feedback, um, and support the student uh, with their learning. Um, again, we have the option for class comments, right? And private comments, right? Um, and when we're ready, we can turn this in using the turn in button, right? Again, it's going to just confirm, hey, we're just confirming, this is what you want to turn in. Yes, turn it in. Again, I still get that option, right? If I realized, oh, I attached the wrong link or, you know, um, there were two images and only one uploaded, right? I can unsubmit and then turn that in again. Next one down the list is a quiz. So a lot of our teachers are uh, using um, Google Forms in conjunction with Google Classroom for quick um, quizzes uh, for students. Um, if I go to view assignment, um, you can see that there is a quiz attached here. The really nice thing about using Google Classroom um, and the quiz feature is that um, once students open the quiz, um, if they are working on their Chromebooks, once the students open the quiz, it will lock everything else on their screen until they have submitted the quiz, right? Um, so this is, a, this is a tool that our teachers um, will enable to prevent students from potentially Googling the answers um, or navigating to other places during, during, a, during a quiz um, or assessment, right? So here we have um, a little quiz. I'm not on a Chromebook at, at the moment, so you don't see that locked screen. But if you imagine, you know, my screen would be locked, it would not allow me to navigate to any other places. Right, um, so I put in my name here. I answer a couple of quick questions. Right, uh, and then hit submit. Right, once I hit submit, that gets turned into my teacher. Everything on my Chromebook will unlock. Right, and now I can, you know, continue to go wherever else I, I need to go. Um, if I click open assignment going to take me back to Google Classroom, back to that assignment. And one thing that teacher or that students need to remember um, uh, is, oh, never mind. Um, so um, when I when I hit submit, it automatically turns that assignment into my into my teacher, right? I don't need to remember to go back. Um, and turn um, that assignment in. It's already been uh, turned in. I'm ready to uh, continue to navigate to uh, whatever the next task or assignment might be. Um, if I click unsubmit here, it really doesn't do anything um, because it's a quiz, right? Um, unless the teacher has given me, you know, a second opportunity to go and, and take the quiz another time. Um, Otherwise, um, this unsubmit button is really not going to do anything. Uh, but I, again, I do ha still have that option for private comments, right? So if I, you know, did have a question, um, if I did have something that I was confused about um, or that I wanted to review with my teacher, I could make a private comment here um, and then follow up with my teacher uh, at the appropriate time. A couple more demonstrations for you this evening. Next one is the uh, class discussion feature. <clears throat> uh, when I go into the class discussion, um, you can see that uh, the teacher has posted um, a prompt here, right? So think about your favorite season, watch the video for a fun season song, um, and then a little bit of a more detailed response. 
with the detail that I need to respond to two classmates and what you like about their favorite seasons, right? So I have a multi-step process here. So step one is that I need to uh, create my own response. And then step two is I need to go and respond to two of my classmates. You can see that the teacher has attached some work here, right? Or some uh, information here, some media here. So there's, there might be a song to listen to or an article to read or a video to watch, something that I'm responding to as a student, right? Um, up here is where I'm able to write my own response, right? Um, you can see that um, it says your answer, right? And it's telling me classmates will see your answer. One thing that it is not showing me is it is not showing me my classmates' responses, right? Google Classroom requires students to first respond before they are able to see the responses of their classmates, right? Which means, you know, I can't be the last one to respond in the class, right? While I wait for all of my classmates to go in and put in their answers, and then I take, then I create a super answer based on what, um, you know, all of my classmates have said, right? I first need to make my own response, right? So I'm gonna say, summer is my favorite season, right? Whatever I'm gonna say, um, right? And this can be as long as I need it to be, right? You can write paragraphs here, right? As long as you need it to be. Um, and then click turn in telling me that once I turn it in, I'm not able to make any changes to my answer, right? So make sure that you have your, you know, your answer full, complete. You, you did everything that you needed to do here. I turn in. And then this is going to change, right? And now it's going to tell me I can now go in and see my classmates' answers to be able to respond to two of my classmates, right? So if I click this, I have no classmates. Um, but if you would imagine, or if you will imagine, uh, my classmates would be listed on the right hand, on the left hand side here. Second time I've done that. My classmates would be listed on the left hand side here, and I could click on a classmate, right? Uh, so I could click on Brian. I could read his response, and then I could reply to him here and say, "I like summer too." right, or whatever um, I might want to say to that. Again, I have the option for that private comment and that class comment if I had any questions about the assignment. Last one is the mark as done. So this is a nice um, way for teachers to keep track of things that, that the students have done um, to potentially prepare for class, to prepare for a class discussion, to prepare for an upcoming assignment or activity, um, um, or just other activities that they may be doing during the day, right? Um, so uh, our teachers get some, some really helpful information on their end about the number of students that are in their class and then the number of students that have completed that assignment, right? So especially in hybrid learning or remote learning, um, uh, you know, it's helpful to, to have an understanding of what are the, the activities, what, is, what are the things that our students are doing um, at home? Um, and there's not always something to physically turn in or digitally turn in um, uh, to, to demonstrate completion, right? Sometimes it's, you know, we're going to uh, have a class discussion tomorrow, right? I need you to do this reading, right? Or watch this video um, or practice your math facts for 10 minutes or, you know, um, whatever it may be, right? Uh, there might be a number of activities um, that, that the teacher may, may post that does not necessarily have work tied to it, right? Um, but Google Classroom is a great way for teachers to get that information into the hands of their students um, or onto the screens of their students. Um, and for
for teachers to keep track of which students have completed which tasks, right? Um, so here, what I just need to do is, so here, this is telling me that, um, you know, we're gonna have a class discussion about this article. Um, I'll need to make three note cards um, and highlight three important elements in the article. Um, the Chromebooks have a digital highlighting tool um, that allows our students to highlight um, within the article. Um, so I can open the article, read it, highlight it, work through it. And when I'm done, I can mark that assignment as being done, right? Um, this will inform my teacher that I have completed this task, right? I'm prepared for the class discussion tomorrow. Um, and, you know, and, and this element is completed. When I go back to classwork, I notice that all of my assignments have turned gray, which means that I have completed all of the work, um, you know, all of the tasks for um, uh, for for today, um, and I am I'm done for the day, right? Uh, when I log in tomorrow, right, I may see some um, you know some new blue icons, right, uh, that. Um, will be work for me to accomplish tomorrow, right? But I've completed all those tasks. When I go back to my main menu and I go to that to do, right? You can see that all of those elements have fallen off of the to do, right? Because they're since they've been turned in, right? They are no longer in my to do, right? They are available under my done, right? So if there was something that I needed to review, um, you know, uh, unsubmit and, you know, modify, um, you know, if, if um, appropriate for that assignment, I can always access my work here. So that is a demonstration of Google Classroom. Um, we hope that it was helpful and that it provided you with some insights as to what your students might be doing as they work in Google Classroom. I'm gonna go back to the presentation turn it back over to Brian. Thank you, Andy, for giving that demonstration. And so we were able to walk through some of the setup for a teacher and then kind of demo what students do in terms of turning in assignments and navigating through all of those different features of Google Classroom. So we wanna thank Dr. Talley again for the opportunity to present tonight um, and showcase Google Classroom and its features that our uh, teachers use. I'll turn it back over to Dr. Talley to close out tonight. Thank you very much, Brian. Andy, thank you so much. We appreciate both of you on your presentation tonight, uh, helping our families understand what their students, their children are going through as they are using our Google Classroom and understanding just some of the great um, um, parts of the program. We are hopeful that this will help parents as you are working with your children. Uh, we are trying to do more more of these parent um, uh, universities. And as mentioned at the beginning, we will have one next month, November 18th, about resources in our community um, that will support you as we are going through this pandemic. So to all of you, good night. And again, thank you so much.